Okay, we are good. Okay, out of that. Oh my god. Okay, go. All right, sorry about that. Welcome to Off the Shelf. I am your host, Miss Victoria. And of course, today we actually have our two co hosts that are listed here. We have Avian and we have Robin. Hello. Hello. Say hi, everybody. Okay, now, of course, with everything going on right now, we all know what today is New Year's Eve. We all have New Year's Eve right now. So, our topic is going to be resolutions. I know some people do it, some people don't. Uh, I like to see it as not so much like uh, most people think of like Lent. They kind of combine that similar to Lent. But you're not giving up something. You're trying to better yourself. So things that you would do. Don't try to do a resolution like typical ones or ones that you know that you're not going to do. But you're like, I've never gone skydiving. So I'm going to do a resolution to go skydiving. You know, just do ones that is something, baby steps. You want to do resolutions that are little baby steps. That's what I would say to do. Now, one of the ones we're going to be talking about, there's four that we're going to feature books that you can check these out here at the Garcia Library. So you can come in and check them out, and you can also place them on hold and pick them up curbside. First one we're going to go ahead and talk about is... Marie Kondo, we all know her for organization. Now this was for organizing your professional life. So those of you who have worked, this will help. This is a joy at work. I know we mentioned the other ones that she's done, which I know Avian has mentioned before in a previous off the shelf. And of course I have mentioned as well because I, with her, I would not know how to fold my shirts as put that way, a little bit better. And of course, now I'm picky. I want to make sure my shirts and pants are folded, just like she says. Uh, still not that great on about uh, getting rid of stuff. And it's still kind of hard to get rid of something, but you know. When it comes to this one, we actually have it on the shelf. And surprisingly, before off the shelf, um, it's very been checked out. So by all means, put this one on hold. And of course, you can uh, pick it up curbside or pick it up when you come inside. Now. Personally, I'm an organized, very OCD. You can ask Robin and Avian when they open my drawer, my pins are in order. Yes, and I will know when they borrow my Sharpies. Uh-huh, Robin. <laughs> Robin seems like she has happened before and she probably replaced it with a different one. Uh, la, 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 la. Yeah. So I'm very organized, so this works for me. I don't know, would either one of you think about looking at this one? Sure. Would you try it? Yeah, very easy to read, which is yeah. nice. Marie Kondo is really good at giving you really simple but helpful advice. So when this came in, I was like, yes, another one. I haven't read it, though. I probably should. Like it, it looks pretty decent and actually compared to her other ones the other ones are like smaller books this one's like a little height wise is a little bigger That's on that different. part so it might be worth it i haven't looked at it either but there's something for all of us you know doesn't hurt i mean she did life-changing tidying up let's put it that way it was it's life-changing to be honest for me so that's one, put this on hold. That's one resolution a lot of people tend to do is I want to be more organized. So those people who are not organized or you are, but not a lot, you, you're like, oh, you're like one of those chaos, but yet it makes sense to you where everything is. This might help to change a little bit. This might be a good resolution for people to try. Now the next one, I don't know nothing about. I'll be quite honest. I don't, I've done a couple of poses just to play around and I've actually have a meditation book and I've done some meditation. So the yoga is something, but I'm more, I, I would like to try Tai Chi myself personally, but I'm our resident person who knows a little about more about this. I'm assuming he's Robin. I'm just kidding. Not, I would be the Tai Chi person, not the yoga. <laughs> Robin needs this for stress relief. So yeah, this is Tai Chi much better. Is it? I yeah. It. Um, okay. For lazy people like me, Tai Chi for is lazy better. people. Yoga, yoga is also a good like exercise for lazy people because 
you don't have to go super crazy and do the warrior poses. Um, there are very <laughs> simple and easy stretches that you can do with yoga. Um, and I, the, this book particularly is yoga for kind of how to calm yourself down. I know this year has been really hard on a lot of people. Um, and there's a lot of people suffering from stress and anxiety. And I know personally, um, having to be a little less active this year um, has actually started to hurt my body. I just don't really move as much as I did before quarantine. So I think that this book is really good for you if you um, need something to calm yourself down or if you wanted to, I know some people really want to start working out for their New Year's resolutions, but realistically, if you have never worked out before, and you try to jump into it, you're probably gonna get tired of it really, really fast. So if you incorporate yoga into it and use it as a warm up or as stretches, uh, you might fare a little bit better into easing into actually working out. It just makes your life a little bit easier. So for someone who is like, I used to be a runner myself personally. So for someone who's starting it up again, for stretching wise, you're saying some of the poses for yoga will help stretch the muscles in my legs that I've had procedures on that will make it a little easier when I go running or walking. Yeah, especially if you haven't used those muscles in a while and maybe you feel kind of like tight or your range of motion isn't what it used to be. Um, starting off with yoga and trying to incorporate it in your daily life is really helpful. You just get a little bit of your movement back. That's good. So that's good to know. That's one another one to try, and we do have that here. And that is true. A lot of times what happens when it comes to resolutions, the uh, go-to ones, if I'd have to say top three, is going to be uh, dieting, exercise, organization. And you may have someone that's going to be in the top three would be like maybe learning to do a new hobby or something. But typically, you're going to get the exercise, dieting, and, of course, organization. Yeah. Usually, that's one. Like, what's your New Year's resolution? I want to lose 10 pounds, and I'm going to finally learn to run and work out. That's usually typically the ones, I would say. So let's find out what our next one is. Ah, speaking of which, learning to cook. That is another one hobby that people... Especially now during quarantine, a lot of people are learning to cook either that or they're getting a lot of subscriptions to uh, Fresh and a Blue Apron and all those places that give you the food. Uh, but a lot of people are trying to learn how to cook because now you're at home. You can't, you can't, they're slowly opening restaurants, but still people are, are kind of hesitant of going into a restaurant still, you know, because of everything. So... They're learning how to cook, and what better than to have the Barefoot Contessa's new cookbook, Modern Comfort Food, uh, as one to help. And she does have some nice recipes and good cookbooks. I mean, she's one of the ones I used to watch. I watched on the Food Network. I'm not gonna. I, I do like watching her. Um, she doesn't have as much pictures for her recipes as uh, the Pioneer Woman does, by step by step. But I like her. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the rest of y'all, if you... Oh, I like her recipes. She has really good recipes. I haven't read this one, but I have her other books. Oh, see, I liked her show a lot on the Food Network. She just has such a calming... She's just so calm and cool. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I always liked that her whole thing was, oh, we're preparing for a party, and then her husband will show up in the episode. So I would actually check this one out. If and I she never seems to get stressed about it. Everything is yeah. all about. She's just like, let's just have a good time and cook. Pretty much. I mean, she's very, like, I love how, like, one of her episodes where she does her parties is uh, setting the table. Like, she is not just a food. We have to make the table look nice. And invitations, like, um, depending on the party, I'll send out a handwritten invitation because it's more personal or if it's just a gathering then i'll send it by text message or an e electronic emailed invitation to people so she's very formal and seems very when it comes to her her parties i guess but it's nice to know like besides just cooking she does and she does some quick ones too i think like she does some quick and easy ones that most anybody can do it's not those recipes where you watch on TV and you're like, I'm never going to do that. 
But her whole thing is always that when you go, that eating should be a social, yeah, in, you know, where you talk to people. You're not just stuffing the food in your mouth. That it's a it's a gathering, and yeah, I think we spend way too little time sitting at a table eating. And she's always very much come to the table, and and eat and talk. We're so busy with our phones. <laughs> At the table. Ooh. And she usually, I guess, never have phones on them. It's like no. she's like, nope. That's one of the things in one of her books. It says, put the phone down. <laughs> Do not have the phone with you. It's like, yay. Interesting. Well, this is a new one. And I, I, I haven't actually seen it. I think I have. I think it might be checked out already also. Apparently, she's very popular still. So this is one, once again, put on hold. And there's a lot of other cookbooks. If you don't want to, you might want to look at hers and look at the recipes. And then again, you might want to find one that's the basics. If you've never cooked, you might want to get some basic ones so you can get the step-by-step -step to help you if you're just starting out uh, cooking. If you're an advanced cook or you know your way around the kitchen and you know what a, a uten the utensils mean in the kitchen, and then you could probably tackle some of her recipes because some of those wordings and ingredients you may look at like it's alien and you don't know what she's trying to tell you to get so if you're basic get a ba if you're a beginning learner get the basic one but you can still get her i would say just to look at and of course you can go and of course watch some of the episodes that bear for contessa because they are still out so it's something to look into and i know she's working on new year's um cocktails because what better do you have a New Year's Eve is a nice cocktail with the appetizers, of course. All right, here comes the last one. Now, we've already gone into organization. We've already done our fitness topic. And we've also just done cooking with another one. Now, this last one is one that people don't think of, but because of quarantine and not only that, sometimes even before quarantine, some New Year's resolution could be that you just want to catch up on something. It could be like, I've never seen, um, for example, not, not that I have, but I have seen the whole season, but let's say I've never seen Lucifer, the show. And someone says, well, what do you, you know what? My news resolution is to watch all the episodes to catch up to the new season. And so that's one of, it could be a resolution is that maybe you want to binge watch movies or TV shows that you've never seen. Uh, of course, being library, we have all these books. You may want to read more as well. But we're going to do more of the binge watching. And we have one. I know Robin helped decide on this one. Yes. It's to binge watch The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. There. So Robin, please go on. Uh, this is my, personally, this is my resolution is, first of all, to catch up on everything that's on Netflix that I haven't seen for the past year, but to sit and watch, I just got the new extended edition of all the Hobbit, so I am going to watch the extended Hobbit all the way through to uh, the Return of the King, big bowl of popcorn, I am just going to veg because I never have time. So this is my resolution. And I think if y'all are into uh, films, what better uh, film to veg and binge on is Peter Jackson. Uh, the Lord of the Rings series is phenomenal. We have it here at the library. Uh, and you can put them on hold. Uh, we have some of the extended edition, not here at this library, but you can put it on hold. They, they, it is available. And just maybe do a family thing. Just sit all together and maybe one a day watch three or four hour movie and put, go all the way through. Then get the books and talk about them. What better way? This is a resolution that your whole family can do or that, you know, your boyfriend, girlfriend can do with you. It's not where you have to do it alone. And you just can't do any better visually, um, story-wise than Lord of the Rings. I mean, there is no other. I am a total Lord of the Rings fanatic. So it is. I agree. 
I agree. I'm Lord of the Rings fan. Hobbit, I love the cinematography of it. But, of course, after rereading re the book, it's kind of like kills it a little bit for me because it's like those people aren't even in the book. It's fine. Uh, but because of the Hobbit, it's like, why would you do that? I know we all like see, Orlando Bloom, but he was Hobbit. not necessary in the Hobbit. We but just see, wanted to see people added to the Hobbit, but they're... Take, you know, they're subtracted from the Lord of the Rings. So it's kind of a give and a take. So True. if you read the books, you'd be going, wait a minute, where's Glorfindel? But okay, we can, you know, I can step can, back. You over. can spend a whole thing just on this alone uh, because I mean, there's so many parts for people who are into this and have watched these. Uh, if you ever watched them, um, um, great. Best thing is to just like Robin has mentioned, watch the extended edition. Yes, it's longer, but for those who have read the books and you love the Lord of the Rings because it was pretty matched closely to the book, uh, so you kind of were like, wait, there's still these pieces missing. How did this person see that one? What happened here? Uh, so if you do the extended or director's cut, I don't know how he phrases it sometimes. I think it's just extended edition in his terminology. Uh it explains a little bit better and you kind of see like, oh, that's how they met and mm -hmm. helps you out a little bit better. So I have not seen the ex extended of the Hobbits, any, any of the three. I mean, did I like it? Yes. Uh, was I a huge fan of it? Not too huge. I mean, I'm always, I'm always going to put Lord of the Rings over it because, yeah. I mean, I do like Aragon and Liv Tyler's character. I can never remember her name, the character, but I just love Arwen. Arwen. Okay, Arwen. I just love them the togetherness there. And but the whole thing it works together as the perfect arc, um, yeah. because the Battle of the Five Armies, while not is just mentioned in the Hobbit, is a central piece in some of the side books that feeds into the Lord of the Rings because half the people are going, well, why, where's the, what's the War of the Ring? Well, that's what the War of the Ring starts over here some um, first, then leads then into the Hobbit, which goes into the Lord of the Rings. And it all kind of fits that um, I'm not a purist, so I'm not going, it has to be like the book. Um, he did a great job with, he did. He did really good. The essence of the books. And it's just something you can sit and watch over and over again. I don't know. I would say just watch the extended edition just for all the bonus extras. If you've never, <laughs> if you've watched Lord of the Rings, but you've never had a chance to watch um, the bonus interviews with some of the cast. There are some crazy things that happen on this set. People definitely pose, people accidentally falling into like rivers and stuff. <laughs> it is, it's just such a good time to see them talk yes, about Vigo Mortensen walking into downtown Christchurch wearing his his Lord of the Rings costume and the sword yeah. to go into a bank. Yeah, that <laughs> and, and having everybody. Well, he needed like, to make a deposit, okay? He, <laughs> yeah, he had to go cash that check. Go cash that check, you know, make sure it went through. With his sword. Where was he going to leave it? He needed to go back on set, Robin. He needed to go on set. So. He said, I'm in character. And everybody was like, okay. <laughs> they, probably they probably just took pictures, too, while they were yeah, at they it. Were like, oh, my God, it's Vigo. Why not, it's Vigo? All right, so this is great. I would say this is a one to do if you haven't. Do binge watch this one. It's a classic. Uh, I love this one. I don't know if I think I would try it since I prefer Lord of the Rings. However, I think I would do it from Hobbit. Binge watch it from watching the Hobbit movies first and then jump into the Lord of the Rings extended edition ones. Uh, kind of follow the trick to that, how it's supposed to be. You'll be surprised at how much you'll go, hey, that was in the other movie. Or, hey, now I know why those those ogres are sitting in that round table on the top of the mountain. Oh. So you'll figure out some of those. Um, besides, because most people, when they binge watch, a lot of times they want to tell them to binge watch things like um, Star Wars or any other ones. They typically will say do that kind of binge watching or TV show binge watching. But it's nicer when you do some movies that you know you can binge watch. And this is another series one just like... Um, Star Wars that people tend to binge watch a lot. So there's a good one. We do have them, whether it's DVD or Blu-ray, we do have it so you can 
check them out. And of course, check on Hoopla. You never know. They might have a movie there for you to rent as well. So I'm going to go on. Speaking of Hoopla, these are ones that are on our Hoopla, <coughs> excuse me, on our digital online resources. Here are a couple ones dealing with it. There with uh, resolutions. We have the Declutter Challenge, and we have some famous foods if you want to do cooking. Uh, fitness or exercising wise, you tend to do dieting, so we do have the intermittent fasting that gives you some tips as well. And of course, the last one, of course, if you want a new hobby, would be to do a guide to make your low maintenance edible garden. Because sometimes people right now, you don't want to go to the store, you want to try something different, you want to do your own garden. I wouldn't jump into beekeeping uh, to get my own honey, uh, but I would do the at least the gardening. I don't think I would jump into the bees. I mean, I love the bees, but I'm not going to try to do beekeeping. Now, other one we do have is Access 360. And this one is going to be particularly just your ebooks and audio. It's not like Hoopla where you can rent movies or TV shows uh, or music. Uh, this one's strictly ebooks and audio. We have the cooking, and this book we actually have because Avian have picked it from our new books. It's pretty cool. All the foods from TV shows he actually makes. And the cover one, I guess correctly, is Ratatouille from the movie Ra animation of Ratatouille. That's actually right there. That's Ratatouille. Uh, we also have, of course, fitness, lose weight like crazy. This one gives you some tips on how to get your beach body. I'm not going to try that at all, but it's good to know. Um, essential oils for mindfulness and meditation because a lot of times you want to relax, try something different. If you're not going to do Tai Chi, try something that's going to help you. Aromatherapy. Aromatherapy because we're all stressed. We're all stressed and anxiety during this time. So we need some way to calm down and relax. Now, what else do we need besides binge watching? Well, we can read a lot. And one of the new books that we have is coming is the Midnight Library. Uh, this was like, pretty interesting. I read some of what it's about, kind of. Uh, I'm not much of an adult, to be honest, reading some adult fiction too often. But this one kind of piqued my attention, not just only because it has the word library in it, but in the title. But it's pretty interesting. So if you want to know a little bit more about it, you can check on Access 360 and uh, check it out because it is available to check out. If not, place it on hold. And I think the other branches actually have ordered this one. Uh, so you might want to check it out in, because it, it also has an icon there. It says part of the Good Morning America book club. So if you're out there trying to buy it, it's probably going by quickly. So you might want to check it out through us to be able to access that. All right. Now, as always, to finish up, I just want to remind you all, to fin uh, visit our Facebook and YouTube channel, which is Corpus Christi Public Libraries. If you haven't already, please like the Facebook page and are uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Now, if you want a list of all the programs we offer at the libraries, uh, go to our website, cctexas.com slash library, click on the link that says virtual programming, and it'll break down all the programs that you can click on, and it will send you directly to our YouTube channel so you can watch them. Now, if you need help finding books, you can visit the online catalog, which is listed right there, as well as the automated number, which is listed that you can call, which will direct you to any of the branches. And you can get help from staff on um, putting items on hold or what books you can recommend. Uh, you can also use a new book alert, author check, and book newsletter to help you out as well. Now, don't forget also that we do have magazines that you can check out. So you can go online just like a book and you can go by the title and you can just type the title, see if we actually own it and you can put that on hold and or you can come in and check it out. You can call us actually too and say, hey, do you have this magazine? And we could let you know. So that way we can let you, you can come by, pick it up and you check it out. You can same, I think it's the same amount of weeks. Is it correct, Robin? Still yes. two weeks? Yes. Okay. So you do and two we weeks. do have back issues. So if there's something from uh, within the year, we don't, we, I don't know about the other libraries, but we only hold back a year. So there's a year, year's worth of each magazine here um, that you can check out. That's good to know. So we do have back issues. Now, just a reminder, I know uh, one thing is 
Uh, you're probably going to end up checking out the back issues because in current issue, uh, you can look at it, but it has stays in the sleeve. Uh, the back issues are available to check out, if I'm correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So we also have that. Don't forget that. And, of course, make sure you do use our online resources, uh, Access 360, and, of course, Hoopla. And I know they have also RB Digital, which deals with electronic magazines as well. Uh, I think they have some books as well, but that's a whole different story. But if you ever have any questions or you need help with online digital resources, you can call any library. And I'll vouch for my branch here. I have great staff here. They do know how to get you set up on your digital resource. If you need help on Access 360, Hoopla, you need recommendations for books, they can help you. They're right there at the front at the CERC desk, and they are willing there to help you find those books. So don't hesitate to ask. They are the, we are here to help you, and they will help you as quickly as possible. And I know I'm hopefully I didn't uh, embarrass them too much with that praise there. I don't want to get him too much in their head over there. No, no blushing. No. Oh wow, Robin's got a little too big there. <laughs> but it's okay. It's a uh, Robin. Y'all deserve that. Y'all do a whole lot for us. Thank you. Now, if you want the direct online programming uh, website, is link right there. That'll give you the virtual programs straight. Uh, I prefer if you prefer to just go straight to our website. And I say that because the link's there. And while you're on the website, you can also go to the library catalog. So I, I find it easy just going to the website, um, tctexas.com slash library. And I want to thank you all for watching. And I just want to give you a heads up, and I know Robin and Avian have seen them come in, because our next topic is going to be for next week, is going to be new arrivals. Yeah. So we are going to be showing you new books that have just come off, fresh off the, of off the shelf, pretty much, and fresh. Of uh, some of them are actually being already checked out, so we're going to try to catch them before, you know, so they can be available for you. Like Pokemon. Yeah, we, we're, we're like really going to try to catch them all. So, so I hope we see y'all next week, and I hope you have a happy new year and happy we new have year. A, a good 2021. We're hoping for the best for this next year. So I will see y'all next time, next week. Bye. Thank y'all for Bye. Bye.